All right, this is Dr. Reshta Pudi. We're moving towards contraception part of the MET revisions, and let's just begin. Good morning, Dr. Bergen. We have 68 questions. Out of these, 60 are high yield, really important. You know, when you're doing blabable, all of it isn't just one thing, right? It's just uh, all OBGYN is together. You have contraceptive questions there, and you do understand through them. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Anna. But um, in this, this is all separate, right? So if you are confused about which contraceptive to give whom and when to use what sort of contraceptive, this is your time to learn, right? So uh, be very focused. We are just going to start and we're, as, as, as always, we're going to learn by, you know, asking one another. All right. This one says that this is a 28 year old woman. And she asks for advice regarding Marina, the intrauterine system. What is the most likely effect on her period, right? You know, the Marina is an introversal, uh, uh, universal kind of contraceptive that we are almost always using. Uh, so let's read from option number five. It says, continual light bleeding is seen in 70% of the people. Is that true for Marina? Initially irregular bleeding, followed by periods that are generally heavier and longer. Is that true for Marina or any contraceptives? If it was universally acclaimed, do you think this should be something that would be causing trouble to a woman as it would be heavier and longer periods? I don't think that that would be making Marina popular. Heavy periods approximately every three months. That means that after every three months, she's gonna have heavy periods. That's option three. Two, amenorrhea 90% after two months. Would it be causing amenorrhea after two months? Initially, irregular bleeding followed by light menses or amenorrhea. Now, what do you think is correct? What do you think is correct? Four. Dr. Bachchan says four. Dr. Bervin says one. Dr. Sadia says one. Dr. Sheila says four. Okay. What are the rest of you guys thinking? Because I know you all are here and we're just starting, so I want everybody to pitch in. Dr. Asma says one. Dr. Zoya says five. Dr. Zareen says we're all few almost are saying four and one. So I'm just gonna go with four and let's see why that is correct. One is correct. See, the thing is, I told you this is universally acclaimed, right? If you forget the things that you need to, then you need to understand the fact that why would so many people recommend it? If it was such a trouble right? Lot, not lots of people do med revisions because it's longer. It takes lots of time. So people recommend uh, plappable. Why? Because it's easier to do, right? Marina, as Dr. Berman says, it's a treatment for menorrhagia, right? It's a treatment for menorrhagia. Secondly, if it was to cause heavier and longer period, as option four says, or if it was to cause continual bleeding, as option five says, it wouldn't be that popular. Right, so option one makes more sense. Let's move to the next question. Now, this one says, which is an absolute contraindication for COCP. You should know this. So we're gonna discuss this and I'll help you remember it, but you have 20 seconds to answer this. Absolute contraindication. First degree relative with venous thromboembolism age 25. Smoker 10 per day over the age of 35. BMI 30. Blood pressure 115.90. Migraine with aura. Which do you think is absolute contraindications for, uh, for the usage of COCB? Yes. One, migraine with aura. Okay, let's see if that's true. That's correct, that is correct. Now, this is a list that you need to remember in some ways, right? Like what are the contraindications? Very important, right? Okay. We always talk about UKME4, UKME-C1, UKME-C2, UKME-C3. Now, UKME-C4 says, represents an unacceptable health risk, meaning it's the worst, okay? Number three says, disadvantages outweigh the advantages, meaning, it's more bad than good. Option uh, UKMEC2 says it's more good than bad. You understand? 
UKMEC1 says that, all right, you can use it, it's fine. Now the examples for UKMEC3, meaning, meaning that the disadvantages are more than the advantages is three, is UKMEC3, right? That it's more bad than good, right? UKMEC2 means that it's good and less bad, okay? So what is more bad if you use it? If a person who's more than age of 35 and they're smoking 15 cigarettes per day, please listen to me. More than 35, 15 cigarettes per day, right? More than 35, 16 cigarettes per day. Let, write it down. This is there in blah, 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 but still. BMI more than 35. BMI more than 35. There's a family history of first degree relative having thromboembolism age 45. age less than 45, controlled hypertension, right? Okay, controlled hypertension, you see the words here, right? Immobility, using a wheelchair, for example, if they've got gene mutations for breast cancer. So that's when you would try to avoid this contraceptive, which is COCD, right? Age more than 35, smoking 15 cigarettes a day, BMI more than 35, have a thromboembolic event and first degree relative, less than the age of 45, controlled hypertension, immobility, breast cancer. And she's already there to use, but still, that's right. So that's absolute. Now, these are the other contraindications. Migraine, uh, the current question, wait. Okay, current question once again. They're, they're just asking, what is the absolute contraindication? What's the absolute contraindication, All right? But I'll go through it, okay? So this is the absolute contraindication. Migraine with aura. You're not supposed to give COCP to a person who's got migraine, right? With aura, okay? Breastfeeding, less than six weeks postpartum. We spoke of it, right? First of all, first of all, you can give, um, you know, POPs in these people. Can you give POPs in, POPs in people who are, having, who are breastfeeding in less than six weeks after postpartum? Is that true? Can you give a POP? POP, no PP, right? You can give a POP. You can, you definitely can, but you cannot give a COCP. When can you give a COCP? When can you give a COCP then? If not breastfeeding, right? If not breastfeeding, then you can think about it, all right? After six months, if breastfeeding, all right? After six months, if, you see you guys have written if breastfeeding. And six weeks, if not breastfeeding. Very right, very important. Age 35 or over, right? Who smokes 15 or more cigarettes a day. Now that one said that, you know, if she is 35 and along with that, she smokes 15 cigarettes a day. This one says that if they are over 35, over 35, and they're smoking more than 15 cigarettes a day, this is when you should not be using this oral contraceptive. Then it says systolic is above 160, diastolic is 95. This one almost means that they are in hypertensive emergencies and urgencies, right? They've got a vascular disease, for example, PAD, an MI, right? Uh, maybe some GCA, those are vascular diseases, right? Okay, stroke, stroke could be a contraindication, right? Okay, uh, then history of venous thromboembolism, current venous thromboembolism um, on anticoagulants, right? They, they themselves have venous thromboembolism. I'm spending time on it because we're gonna have questions regarding it, right? We're gonna have lots of questions. So this is why I'm spending time on it. I'm not stupid, I'm not crazy. I am a little, but still, all right? Do focus on it, right? So migraine with aura, breastfeeding, age 35 or more. Systolic blood pressure 160, diastolic 95, vascular disease, history of VTE, current VTE on anticoagulants, major surgery with prolonged immobilization, right? In the previous one, it did say that, you know, if they're immobilized, you should be definitely, you know, uh, asking them not to take the contraceptives. But here it says that they are absolutely, you know, Absolutely not to take these um, contraceptives, right? If they are having a vascular disease, right? If they are having a vascular disease. Okay, right, all right. Then known thrombogenic mutations, right? Known thrombogenic is um, more of a sin which we 
don't need to focus on, but you need to know this. Current and history of ischemic heart disease, stroke, TIA, I told you vascular covers almost all of it. Um, all right, uh, as we are moving forward, we've done the CHETS West score. Can you tell me what is the score for age and sex? Just revising, just revising a little bit. A score for age and sex. A score for age and sex. Sex, female one, age, okay, 64 to 74, one, more than that, two, okay. What about female? Sex, female one, all right, okay. Good, thank you for remembering. Okay, congenital valvular heart disease. You just have to remember, well, you just have to disease, remember three things here. Now, I'm gonna read it all and then I'll tell you what to remember, how to remember it. Because you know, this is such a long list, how you'd remember it. Vascular disease is severe compensated cirrhosis, epithelial carcinoma, raw nodes with lupus, phospholipid antiphospholipid antibodies. Now, what do you need to remember? You need to remember three things, uh, at most four things. Number one, my grief with aura. Number two, breastfeeding. Number three, smoking. Number four, anything that is major vascular disease or has an anticoagulant or anti, you know, uh, autoimmune kind of disorder, right? You see over here, any major vascular problem, when it's from embolism, history, the, uh, their selves, is their self, you know, not a related, their self having a disease, a history of it is a major vascular problem. No, isn't it? Uh, being immobilized, it's going to lead to stasis of the blood. Again, we went venous from embolism. Having a stroke, a history in self, right? Congenital heart disease. Again, heart is a big vessel, isn't it? Like it holds the blood. Vessel as in V E double -S, S S L, you know, like, like a jar or a jug. Current breast cancer, nephropathy, retinopathy, neuropathy, right? Decompensated cirrhosis. These all are major vascular problems, almost major vascular problems, right? And autoimmune diseases along with liver problems. Why? Because COCPs are going to affect the liver, right? Really important that you understand this and uh, do not forget this, right? Changes were made in 2016. Breast feed in six weeks to six months. Postpartum was changed from UK MEC3 to UK MEC2. What they're saying right now is, is that Breastfeeding six weeks to six months postpartum is now UK MEC3, meaning the advantages are more than disadvantages. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now, the problem with missed pill, even if it means taking two pills in one day, if you missed one pill, then you should take two pills in a day, right? Then the second one says if you missed two or more pills, take the last pill, even if it means taking two pills a day then leave any earlier missed pill and continue taking pills daily on each day, right? Meaning, meaning that you should not miss the pill, but if you miss more than two pills, please take them at the same time. If you have, if you have been in, uh, in sex, if you have not abstained from sex, uh, then you are supposed to go for, you know, the rescue pills that we are aware of. However, however, you need emergency pills or you should also be using in very contraceptives, right? Like you should be using condoms and abstain for sex until seven, until she has taken pills for seven days in a row. You know what it is? It says that if you miss more than two pills, right? When you were on a COCP and you miss more than two pills, this is important for your PLAB one. This is important for your PLAB two, right? You're going to have a station, maybe. You, you would have a station or contraceptive. So this is important, right? It's not just for PLAB one, also for PLAB two. So do focus on it. Women should be advised to use condoms or abstain from sex until she has taken pills for seven days in a row, right? Until she has taken all the pills seven days in a row. In case the pills are missed in a week, one, you know, like, like when you're taking those COCPs, you have these weeks, right? You have these rows of weeks. You have got some blue pills and then some red pills. You guys know, you might have seen a COCP pack. If she missed the pills from week one, emergency contraception should be considered if she had unprotected sex, sex right? In the pill-free interval or in week one. You understand what it is? It says that if she took, if she missed the pills in the week one, for taking COCP, if she missed the pill in COCPs, week one, she should abstain from sex and she should be going for emergency contraception. You understand? If she missed the pills in week two, 
then what she should do, she should be taking the COC pill for seven consecutive days, no need for emergency contraception, right? No need for emergency contraception. But if she missed the pill in week three, which is day 15 to 21, she should finish the pills in her pack and start new pack the next day, meaning that she should not omit, uh, that she should omit the pill-free interval. What does that mean? That means that, you know, we're saying that if she missed the pill in week one, here's a summary, week one and pill-free interval, go for emergency, right? That's number one. You need to remember that. If she missed the pill in week one and the pill-free interval, go for emergency. Okay, can you guys hear me and understand what we went through? Or did you miss a lot of it? Yes. Okay, week three is not clear. Okay, week three is not clear. All right, here's the thing, here's the thing. <clears throat> if she, see, you just need to remember two things here. Number one, the contraindications. We spoke of them, right? We spoke of the contraindications that, you know, anything major with vessels, with heart, with, li with uh, liver, that autoimmune disorders, migraine with aura, right? Hypertension of bad sorts, right? Th those are the contraindications, right? Week one and pill free interval, if she's on that, she should be going for emergency contraception. If she's on week three, if she's on week three, she should continue and empty the current pack. She should not, now there is a pill-free interval when you take COCPs. She should not be going pill-free. She should start the next pack. You understand now? Yeah, does it make any sense? We're gonna do lots of questions on COCPs, right? Because those are the popular ones after Marina. All right, guys? Okay, clear? Let's move to the next thing. Okay, a 28-year-old female presents to her GP as she missed her micronor pill, which is which is progesterone only pill this morning, these questions would come. Be very careful. We're not here for fun, all right? It's not just 68 questions for fun. This is important because you're going to be working in their emergency departments after you've done inshallah you plat to your registrations, right? So you need to know this. She was she normally takes a pill at around 8:30 and now it's 1100 R. What should you tell her? What advice would you give her? She was taking progesterone only pill. What do you want to tell her? Take miss pill now and no further action needed, right? Emergency contraception should be offered. Take miss pill now and advise condom use until pill taking reestablished for 48 hours. Take miss pill now and omit the pill free break at the end of the pack. As it's less than three hours, then you want to go for five, Dr. Berman? Okay. Hmm. Perform a pregnancy test. All right, that is extreme. All right. This topic was tested in October 2020, right? This was tested in October 2020. That's what they say. It was also repeated in February exam of 2021 and August exam of 2021, right? So it's got repeated, right? It's repeated like loads of time. Now, this is important. There are two kinds of POPs, right? There are two kinds of POPs. Don't worry, Dr. Hamza. Don't worry, don't worry. You're gonna get the recording, right? Okay, now, there are two kinds of POPs, right? We've just started with question three. Okay, we've just started. Now, there are two kinds of POPs. The ones which are traditional POPs, right? Like the Micronor, uh, Norde, Norgestron. Okay. Can you not or can you put? Wait a second. Let me just. 
Okay, there are two types of POPs, right? There are two types of POPs. There is one which is traditional. There is one which is traditional. And then there are other ones which are not traditional, traditional, right? Now, here is the thing. Here is the thing. Taking the POP should be taken at the same time without the pill free interval, unlike the COCs, right? You're going to take them every day. POP is something that you're supposed to do and take every day. Thank you for telling me that, right? Okay, missed pills. If less than three hours, as the one that we saw, right? If less than three hours, this is not the traditional one, right? Desogestrel is not the traditional one. Is it the traditional one, right? This is not the traditional one. Desogestrel is not traditional one, all right? These are traditional ones. These Macronor, Noridae, Norgestrin, Femilin. These are the traditional ones, right? If she is taking the non-traditional one, which is desogestrel, right? Then a 12 hour period is allowed, right? If she's taking the traditional ones, then, and, and she missed the pills less than three hours, you need not do anything as we just saw, right? Because she was taking the, uh, the traditional one, Micronor, we didn't do anything, right? Because it was just less than three hours. She is supposed to take it 8.30 in the morning, but she is, you know, 1100 hours and she hasn't taken it. However, if she was saying that, you know, she usually takes it at 8.30 in the morning and today is it's 1 p.m. and she hasn't had it, then you would take an action if it was a traditional one. And, you know, you are supposed to do the following as we move forward. But if she was taking desogestrel, right, which is Sarazet, if she was taking this, which is non-traditional, and she usually takes the pill at 8 a.m. in the morning, and right now it's 1 p.m. and she hasn't taken it, so fine, it doesn't matter, because, you know, we're going to give her a 12-hour period. All right, you understand? If uh, she's taking the traditional one, she missed the pill, take as soon as possible, continue the rest of the pack, extra precautions, using condoms, and you have to establish a pill, uh, you have to establish, um, you know, um, a, a period of 48 hours till when you'd be taking a uh, pill. And till then, you're supposed to use extra protection. Right, guys? You understand? That's the gist of it. That is the gist of it. That's the gist of it. For your, for your, for your desogestrel, for your desogestrel, if more than 12 hours, right, that is more than 36 hours since the last pill was taken, you understand what it is? 24 hours in a day, right? She takes the pill at eight in the morning all the time, right? She takes the pill at, uh, you know, eight in the morning always. She takes it eight in the morning always. All the time she takes the pill when? She takes the pill at eight in the morning, right? She takes it eight in the morning. Today it was eight and she missed the pill and she's taking desogestrel, right? Today it was eight and she missed the pill. Now you need to add 12 more in it. Right, so this together is 24. You add more in it. Now, what is it? Is it? It is 36. Now it's 36 hours. Right? If she missed pill and it's been more than 36 hours, that's when you need to do what? Take it as soon as possible. More uh, than one pill missed. Take one pill. Take the next pill as at usual time and use extra precautions as we do for the other one. So here, just the time duration matters. And that's how we go about it. Contraception summary, we've done this. If there's a young woman not sexually active, um, go for transamic acid, right? Go for transamic acid, menorrhagia, dysmenorrhea, mephenomic acid, just menorrhea, dysmenorrhea, menorrhagia, CFCP in young women not sexually active. If she's sexually active, those who require contraception, menorrhagia, if she's younger than 20, old, I use Marina is, okay, the R's rule you did not get. Here, here. She's taken the traditional pill, right? She's taken the traditional pill, right? Not Cerazet, not Cerazet, three hours. You need to look at the three hour thing. If she's taken Cerazet, 12 hour thing, all right? If she missed the pill more than this, this time for these pills, then you are supposed to ask her to take it as soon as possible, use the extra contraception, and until 48 hours have been passed, Till then, she's supposed to use extra precautions. Understood? Right? That's what it says. It's just about the hours, right? For example, there are 24 hours in a day. You take the pill usually at 8 in the morning, but now it's been, you know, um, more than 36 hours, right? More than 36 hours for Sarazet, okay? More than 18 hours, right? No, no, 12, 24 plus 3, how much is that? 27, 28 hours. That's when you're supposed to ask her, do you know, like you're going to use extra contraceptives, extra barrier uh, methods, and you're also going to, you know, 
uh, take extra precautions and till 48 hours at best, try and be safe and do not practice sex, right? That's what you tell her, okay? This one we've done already that you know you were supposed to ask them for menorrhagia, dysmenorrhea, depending on the age, younger than 20, no marina, but COCPs, we've done that. If she's got sickle cell, dipoprovera, if within 72 hours of unprotected sex, live in all pill, if 120 hours have passed, then IUCD or LL1 pill. All right, guys, is that clear? This is clear. Let's move to the next question. Let's move to the next question. All right, next question, guys. Next question. I'm hoping you guys are following and understanding and that every, everything is making sense. Hey, Dr. Samir, are you following? Right, I'm hoping that you are. Okay, next question. What is the most appropriate next step in her management? What's the most appropriate next step in her management? A 23-year-old female and her male partner present to the GP as they have been unsuccess unsuccessfully trying to conceive for four months. Her period have been regular and there is no obvious cause in her history. What is the most appropriate next step in her management? You guys have 20 seconds to answer this. 're do what are we going to do so read, let's read from option number five refer to the patient for a laparoscopy right laparoscopy and diet test are you sure okay address how the couple are having sexual intercourse reassure the patient refer the patient for a basal temperature test refer the patient for a luteal phase progesterone test refer the patient for partner and semen, semen analysis first you need to explore right you need to explore that how they are doing things and um, how is the sexual intercourse and next question all right what's the single most appropriate advice so she is 25 now these questions are two liners you got to read them for 100 percent time uh, reason and for sure. Um, 25 year old toxicycline for 10 days. Okay. She has been using combined contraceptive pills regularly for the past six months. What is the advice? Combined contraceptive pills can be used with additional contraceptive method necessary. No additional method, contraceptive method is necessary. Continue taking COCPs plus an additional barrier methods for two days. Continue taking COCPs, additional barrier method for 10 days. Um, it stops your CP pill for a week. Now here you need to know one thing. What? What do you need to know? If you guys are saying five, why are you saying five? What do we need to know here? 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 Whether, whether the drug that they are taking, does it affect the COCP drugs or not? right? The drug that they are taking, does it affect the liver enzymes or not, right? Okay, so you need to remember the crap GPs and sick, sick faces, right? The crap GPs are the inducers, right? Carbamazepine, rifampicin, alcohol, phenytoin, dracyophilvin, uh, right? Phenobarbital, St. John, St. John Watts of Nyuria, smoking. These are the inducers, Right? Then there are the inhibitors, okay? Sodium valproate, isoneazide, cimetidine, ketoconazole. Okay. Ketoconazole, fluconazole, acute alcohol intake, chlorophenicol, erythromycin, sulfonamide, ciprofloxacin, omeprazole, metazole. Uh, these are big, big, big lists. How would you remember them? How would you remember them? Inducers, inducers are, you know, 
Gar Riff, Gar Riffel, right? Gar Riffel, Gar Riffel. You need to remember Gar Riffel, right? Gar Riffel. What does that mean? Carbam is a sin, carbam is a pin for carb, right? Riff for rifampsin, L for alcohol, P for phenytoin, phenobarbital, right? Gar Riffel, S for Saint George. St. John words. Yeah, you could remember that described GPs, but you know, you're going to forget which C. Which C? Ciprofloxacin or carbamazepin? You're going to forget whether it is, uh, you know, the uh, phenytoin or phenobarbitone, right? Yeah, that, that's right. If you remember the inducers, you don't need to remember the inhibitors, right? However, however, you need to know what those are, right? So car riff helps. Car refelps, right? C A R for carbam carbamazepine, Riff for rifampsin, A for alcohol, P for phenytoin, phenobarbitone, S for sulfonylurea and smoking, all right? Okay, car refelps, all right? Car refelps helps if you want to remember in that way, or if you want to remember crab GPs, fine. But with those crab GPs, I don't think you'd be able to remember what does it C spend, stand for, all right? However, whatever works for you, you need to know these. You need to know these, all right? For the extra knowledge, you know? That's what they said. Do you like this term? I never like this. Extra knowledge. We have so much knowledge already. We don't want more. Okay, next question. Let's speed things up because we want to do neurology too. Okay, you guys have 30 seconds to answer this because we've done this before. Folks, I mean 30 seconds. However, you need to read and maybe use a full minute for such questions, but try and use 30 seconds. I'm going to count 20, 19, 17, 16, 15, 14, 12, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, and two, one. Okay, uh, Dr. Seher, can you hear us? Dr. Seher, can you hear us? Okay, can you read this question for me, please? Rose, my screen is not proper. Uh, Meenan, you can't see the screen? I can read anything. Why? Can you guys read this? Okay, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. All right. I wanted Dr. Sarah to read, but I guess she can't. So all right. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Always read from option number five. In big questions, always read the question. Uh, all right, Dr. Samir, the next time, inshallah, inshallah. All right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What is the most appropriate course of action? Right? She asks you not to tell anyone, especially her father who is also one of your patients, right? She's 15 years old. Now, how do you read this question? How do you read this question? How do you read this question? You've got less time, but you really want to read this. This is your first, thing, first sentence. This is your second sentence. Now what you, okay, you, you can read the, read the screen. All right, thank you, Dr. Samir. I'm sorry, I must understand. Okay, what is the most appropriate course of action? That's this. She asks you not to tell anyone, especially your father. This is the second thing. Then you need to look at the word, the numbers. 15 year old, the, the abbreviations, GP, all right? Question in Gillick. Now, see, these are the standout words, all right? Boyfriend, 25 year old, Max, teacher at a local school, right? Okay, what's the next thing? Three weeks ago, last period. Not pregnant, three weeks ago, last period. See, I didn't read the whole thing. But at least I read the things which are important. So the first thing is reading the question, then the numbers, right? The, the abbreviations, the things that stand out, again, the number. We've done Gillick's competency. We're gonna do it again, but let's just read the question first, right? Now, 
This one says that she is in, 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 in you know, in a relationship with, a, she is 15, right? What is the age of consent in the UK for sex? What is the age of consent in the UK for sex? 16, right? 16, 16. And she's supposed to be with a partner who is of the same age, right? Of the same age. This person is not of the same age, right? However, if she was 14, 15, and she had the mental capacity, and her and her partner was, you know, um, was someone who was of almost the same age, you'd be like, all right, we don't care. We're not going to involve anyone. We're not going to tell anyone. Now, what do you want to do here? What do you want to do here? Option five says inform that you need to tell the social services, child protection services, explain that we will need to tell them if she doesn't consent. Five, she's 15. Inform that you need to tell social services, child protection services if she refuses, accept. We won't do that, right? Okay. Contact the boyfriend and ask her for ask for consent. He's 25, he's clearly manipulating her. All right. Maybe prescribe, but we're, we're not going to be judgmental here, are we? Uh, we should, but let's not be. Okay, prescribe the contraceptive pill, but document discussion. That's stupid. Inform her boyfriend's school about the relationship and the fact that they are seeking contraception. So what do you want to do? Do you want to be a telltale person, a person who goes about uh, uh, doing gossip, which is option one? Do you want to be stupid and, you know, ask the boyfriend for consent, which is option three? Option five is that, you know, maybe just explain to her and accept what she wants, which is option four. Or do you want to tell the social services and tell her that if she doesn't consent, we're going to tell them? What do you want to do? I explained the question. I read it with you. I've explained it. What do you want to do? Option five? Let's see if that's true. Let's see if that's true. Four. Dr. Zareen says four. Dr. Sheila says five. That is right. Inform her that you know you need to involve the social services, right? You need to involve the social services. And no social services wouldn't take them away or so, but 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 it's really important that you inform her that you know we're going to talk about it. Okay, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, always stick to the gut. I mean, tell me what is Skillex? Uh, this is really important. Let's read it. You should usually share information about abusive. This is abuse. No, she is fifteen. The guy is double her age right? He's 15 years older than her, okay? 25, okay? Not good, except if you were in Pakistan and your mom wanted you to marry to your cousin. Just kidding. It's not real, but it does happen in other countries, all right? Okay, so that's fine. That's friends. That's child marriage. That's all right. It's another issue. We're not talking about what we're talking about, the things that happen in the UK, right? You should share information about abusive, seriously harmful activity involving any child, young person, or older individual. That is where you apply to older, weak people, uh, not mentally fit, young or child. Understand these four or five categories are important. They should understand the consent, if they are immature, they are still unfit. If the person who they are involved with is at a position of trust, a, a, a teacher is a person that we trust, right? You guys trust me, right? But I'm gonna give you the positive and nice kind of information, right? I'm not gonna give you some information which is false. And if I don't know, I'm gonna say, all right, I don't know, I'll, I'll just look it up, right? So no abuse should come from a position of trust. For example, you're gonna be doing these things in in the future, NAI, and we're gonna be doing ethics. So I'm gonna just, tell you this, a position of trust, meaning a teacher, a partner, mother, daughter, sister, these are the positions of trust, right? No such thing should happen. Force or threat to force, psychological pressure, emotional pressure, bribery or payment to ex engage in sexual activity or keep it a secret. You understand? So important. This thing is so important for your PLAP 2-2, all right? For your PLAP 2-2, this is important. Right, so do not, do not, do not let go of it. Let's just, let's just look at it. Let's dig a little deep, all right? Drug or alcohol use to influence a young person, right? That's not fine. That's never fine. A person is known to the police or the child protection agencies as having an abusive relationship with children, right? So this is just your test, what you're gonna do, right? What you're gonna do. Big differences in age and maturity and they're on the sexual power, et cetera, right? Very important that you understand this. All right, next question. You guys have 30 seconds to answer this. 
Okay, POPs, currently breastfeeding. That's your best bet. 20 days postpartum, 21 days postpartum. How long can you give them? Reversible. There are three things you need to look in here. Again, let's read the question, right? Then we're gonna do it as a mock thought. She wants a contraception. She's 30 years old, 21 days postpartum, right? Uh, fear that fear of needles, you see this? Fear of needles, contraception, reversible, six months. So if I just had to read the way I told you, right? Um, uh, currently, uh, she's asking for contraception, breastfeeding, 21 days postpartum, 30 year old, six months ago, a six months later, she wants to conceive again, afraid of needles, what do you wanna do? Nothing else except the pill, no COCPs, right? As simple as that, okay, understood? Next question, hopefully you guys are following. That is awesome. Follow Dr. Samir, he's doing good. Okay, all right, okay. 30 seconds for this one again. We've done this, we've done this. Please do not forget this. Use your heads and uh, what we've talked about. Let me count. Should I count? ovarian cancer right why because it's got because it's got what it reduces the risk of ovarian cancer why cocps have what protective because of what because of what estrogen right demoxifen estrogen right so let's see if that's true i'm sure you guys know it i hope it's correct that's right right the rest of them are right cocps Increase the risk of breast and cervical cancer. How do you remember this? CBC. COCPs increase what? Breast and cervical cancer. CBC. Contraceptives. In COCPs increase the risk of what? Breast cancer and cervical cancer. You're going to forget this. This is why I'm making you remember it. You need to remember one thing. Either what increases it or what decreases it. Right, what it decreases or what it increases. So it increases the risk of uh, breast and cervical cancer, which is CBC. Again, 30 seconds, guys. What is next plan on? That's the first question. What is next plan on? What's next plan on? Implant of what? Progesterone. Okay, you guys, this ain't irregular bleeding. Subcutaneous implant, it causes irregular bleeding. Progesterone tend to cause bleeding in the first, how many months? How many months? How many months? At least six months, right? At least six months, right? With these drugs, which POPPs, three to four months, at least six months, three to five months, they're gonna have, you know, irregular bleeding, even with POPs. Is that true? Don't take my word for it, right? Do do look it up. Okay, okay. Which one of the following contraceptives do the FSRH, Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare, recommend should be discontinued after the age of 50? And why? He's saying injectable contraceptives such as Dipoprovera because of the fact that we are 
trying to protect the old lady, 50 years is old, sexually, because uh, they are perimenopausal and we don't want them to get osteoporosis. Hopefully you guys are following. All right, next question. All right, which one of, less than 20, more than 20, very right, very right, very right, more than 50, all right. Uh, Dr. Berman has got it right. Okay, great, great, great. Which one of the following would you recommend? Uh, Dr. Nene, are you there? Dr. Froze, are you there? Dr. Hamza, Dr. Asma, Dr. Maria, Dr. Noreen, Dr. Pradesh. Dr. Pradesh, hello, are you there? Dr. Safana. You see, from the next class, I don't care. If, if you guys are busy, tell me, right? But if you do not respond, I wouldn't let you win. And I'll be taking you out of the recording. I'll return your money. I mean it, unless you give me a proper reason. Unless you give me a reason, I don't care. Okay, I can even work with two individuals. That's all right, this is not for me. My throat doesn't work either, but I want you to be involved, right? Uh, my doctors asked me not to talk, but I told her, okay, do tell me that, do tell me that. At least respond from one or two, all right? Please do that, okay? Please respond from one or two. Yes, you're getting the recordings and I can take them back, all right? Because I have the keys and you don't, right? So right now I'm on top of it, okay? All right, that's all right, Dr. Pradesh, but please be here. I want to know if you're understanding and following. You get in the recordings for sure, right? So do follow it. Okay, so which, coming back, and I'm, I'm done being mean. Okay, which one of the following would you recommend? A 23 year old uh, female is 14 days postpartum. She's on formula feeding for her baby, and uh, she's had unprotected sexual intercourse two days ago. What would you recommend? Putting this postpartum, she's naturally immune to not being pregnant, all right? Okay, no need, nothing to be done, nothing to be done. 28, 21 days, non-breastfeeding, 28. See, read this, 28 days, non-breastfeeding, okay? Okay, okay, non-breastfeeding. That is the earliest date of evolution in non-breastfeeding to be 28, hence, Hence, see, read the question, ovulation, 28. Contraception is required from day 21 onwards as a sperm can survive up to seven days. You see, seven days, all right? Okay, where is the single most appropriate place to insert the implant? Next one on, where do you wanna do it? Think about it. When you're trying to insert something subcutaneous, you want to insert it in an area which you don't use much. Four or two. Okay, four. Subdermal, non, see, read the thing. The word is subdermal. How many layers of skin do we have? Listen to what I'm saying. How many layers of skin do we have? How many layers of skin do we have? Unless you're a snake, you have one. Okay, you've just got one. Layers of the skin is one. Layers of the skin is one. A skin has many layers, right? A skin has many layers, right? A scalp has five. S-C-A-L-P, basic histology. I know we've forgotten it, that's all right. That's all right. Here, epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous, right? Cutia means skin, all right? So we're not going under the dermis, we're going where? What do you wanna do? That's correct. Subdermal, right? Subdermal. Cutaneous is a skin, but the said subcutaneous fat. You see, subcutaneous fat, subcutaneous fat. We're not going to go and insert it in the fat. We're going to insert it under the skin. All right, subdermal. Read it. This is why I said start reading from fifth above because your brain is going to make you take the things that you see first. All right. Okay. That is your brain, and we do that. All right. This is for you. You guys have. Uh, 20 seconds to watch this. All right, I'm gonna count for you. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 12, 11, 8, 7, 6, 
five, four, three, two, and one. Yes, what is it? Dr. Nene, are you there? Okay, anytime during the cycle. That's right. Copper intrauterine contraceptive device can be fitted at any point. Why? Because it's non-hormonal, all right? Is it hormonal? Do we have any hormones in copper intrauterine contraceptive device? Or is it just copper? The word says copper, right? So there are no copras in there, right? There, there are no hormones. Note the value of informing the patient to refrain from intercourse or adequate contraception to prevent pregnancy until intrauterine contraceptive devices are fitted. That is very obvious. Okay, it can all be shortly fitted at first or second trimester abortion in four weeks postpartum. Please remember this. So you have to write the following postpartum 21 days. What can you do with breastfeeding, without breastfeeding? When can you give the POP? When can you give the COCP? When can you give the IUCD? All right, intrauterine contraceptive device. So four weeks is when you do that, right? Please write it down in the chat box. I want to see if you've understood. When do you give the COCP? When do you give the POP, postpartum, breastfeeding? and IUCD. Okay, all right, next question. Uh, do, do write it down, but we're also progressing further. Uh, what is the most common adverse effect by POP? You know this, I know you know this. Let's do this fast. I know you know this one. Four weeks, Dr. Sadia, four weeks, four weeks. IUCD within four weeks. Intra uh contraceptive device, which is a device, four weeks, all right? 20% of women will be amenorrheic, 40% would bleed regularly, 40% would have erratic bleeding. And this can go long, as long as uh, six months, and it's gonna get better within one year, okay? If you stop the pill, all right. So that's why I'd say that, that, you know, it takes time to, okay, this is again for you. Uh, it just takes time to con conceive, uh, at the beginning and also after you've you know been on contraceptives at least one year okay you guys have 30 seconds to answer this i'm not going to give you the timer i'm just going to turn my voice off so that you could understand what 30 seconds means Now, here's the thing. If you were running out of time, then you'd have to choose either, you'd have to choose a big sen big sentence, right? What is a big sentence here? Two and five. Two says, give her a prescription for the contraception. Who is Dr. Froze? Is that Nene? All right. Uh, give her a prescription for a contraception pill, but call her parents after to let them know. Now, you just read this, and she's 13 years old. She is with a boyfriend. Now, I haven't read the question, but how am I, how am I, how am I, how am I judging things based on the time if I don't have? And I'm going to read this sentence that I'm looking at the age, looking at this, and she is otherwise fine. She understands the risk associated with it, meaning she has got the capacity, right? So you don't need to tell the parents, do you? Give her a prescription for a contraceptive pill, but encourage to discuss with the parents because she has got the understanding. This is how you read such questions if you do not have time. Otherwise, you're advised to read it properly. All right, guys? Okay, so they want us to choose... Next question, folks. Thirty seconds. That is right. Wait until they're having regular intercourse for 12 months. Is that true? They just had sexual intercourse for six months. They're young. They're in their 20s. They're failing to conceive. What is the most appropriate course of action? They are having regular intercourse. You want them to wait for 12 months. Is that is that too much to ask? No, just tell them, be patient. It's going to happen if it's supposed to, and if you guys are fine. Right? 
Regular intercourse is defined, defined as intercourse every two to three days, right? Dr. Zaya says less than 30, 12 months, greater than 30, 24 months. Okay. So women are on the clock. All right. 30 seconds again for this one. Let's see if you can do this. I'm gonna count now, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so how am I gonna read this question? How am I going to read this question? Uh, what's the most appropriate action? 18 year old, uh, contraception, does not use regular contraception, is on day 20th of a 28 day cycle. You discuss the intrauterine device, but she declines. What's the most appropriate action? She's come for emergency contraception. Last time, the quantum split. Last night, the quantum split. How long has it been? Last night, right? What can you give her? Reassure, she is not on contraceptive. Do you want to reassure her? Explain she's out of the emergency contraception window. Is that so? She just said it last night. She does start the dose of lemonade. Just to repeat at 12 hours. Two is logical. Reassure her. Why? She's here for emergency contraception. She's not on any contraceptives. The quantum split last night. You want to reassure her. Fine. Wait. When you get pregnant, come to me. Is that what you're going to do? But the, but the sperm's there. Right, guys? So you guys are saying one. Let's see if that's true. Most of you are saying one. However, I've not read the options three and uh, four and five. We were supposed to read them. It's dark levonorgestrel. This was tested in 2020. We just spoke of it. We just spoke of it. We just spoke of it. it started at 1.5, right? Okay. If she throws up, then she's supposed to take another pill. If she doesn't throw up, fine. No need to take another pill. 30 seconds for this one. She's taken Mirena. How long would it be when the Mirena starts to work that she should rely about it? It was three weeks, three weeks, what oh, doctor asked me. Okay, for this, all right, all right, this is yours. Okay. How long would it take for Marina to start working? Seven days, okay, you guys are saying seven days. Let's see if that's true. That's correct. Please write these things down. Please write them down. I hope you're making notes. I hope you share with them, them with me. Just one or two pages is what you have to write your contraceptives on. Because on your exam day and the day before you wouldn't have time, you have to do things by keeping the end in your head, right? What you're going to do at the end of the day? How are you going to refer? What are you going to do about it, right? So it was her third week, third week of what? No, no, no. Uh, she just, it, it was just last night when she was, you know, uh, she had sex and the condom split and that she was not using any contraceptives. Third week of what? Third, third week of nothing. She wasn't on any contraceptives, right? I hope I'm getting the answer close. Okay, so COCP injections, implants, IUS, it takes seven days for them to work. Please don't forget this. Please do not forget this, right? Do not forget this. Take seven days to work. All right, that is all you need to know for this one. Next question, let's move a little bit faster. POP five days, Dr. Zoya says POP five days. I hope that's right, because you're responsible for the information that you lay out. And I think that's true, all right? Okay, so again, 30 seconds. Five, 
35 year old female, three weeks after delivery, second child, breastfeeding, 28 is her body, body mass index, index, husband had a vasectomy, booked for in three months time. What do you want to do? She is how many days? Three weeks, which is, which is, three sevens are 21, POP. Better to give a POP. We can give a COCP too, but why are we not giving a COCP? Because she's breastfeeding. Because she's breastfeeding. Guys, 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 guys. See, she's breastfeeding. You can't give a COCP because she is breastfeeding. Can, when you can, when can, can, can you give her a COCP if she's breastfeeding? This is what you need to know. When can you give her COCP if she's breastfeeding? After? After how much? Six months, not weeks. Six months if she's breastfeeding. All right? Okay. Do not forget that. Please don't forget that. That's what we're doing, right? We, you know the information. We're just testing it. Okay. All right. 30 seconds again. Absolute contraindication of COCP. Thirty-six year old, twenty days, twenty cigarettes, right? Twenty cigarettes. All right, you guys are saying day 21, which is correct, I hope so. That is right, because they've been doing it for, what, for a year. It's not working out, right? Next question, guys. Next question. If I don't talk, that means that you guys are off, right? Because I think like those questions were normal to be understood. So this is why. All right. Okay. Next question. And uh, this is, again, important. She is having a history of epilepsy. She's also doing well pro eight. As a part of the treatment, what would you tell her? What do you want to do here? You want her to take iron tablets. Once pregnant, all anti drugs should be withheld. Additional barrier methods should be used. Take folic acid with the treatment. No additional precautions to be taken. What do you want her to do? She's on sodium valproate. She's got epilepsy. Do you want her to conceive with Tony Valproy? Do you want her to conceive with Tony Valproy? Is Tony Valproy teratogenic or not? 
Is it a safe drug? Think about it before you answer. She has to take extra precautions in not to get pregnant, guys. It's a simple question. I told you, your one-liners are the worst ones, right? Your one-liners are the first ones. So next question, she is supposed to not be having pregnancy, okay? That's the same for a person who's got acne and, you know, right? Yeah, like teratogenic. And, and that's the same for a person who's got acne and they're, you know, you're doing what? They're taking vitamin A which is your isotretinoin. Okay, 30 seconds for this one. Not 30 seconds, let's give you 20 because we've done this. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? How long it would take for this to be relied on, desogestrel is what? Is it an implant or a pill? Is it an implant or a pill? You're saying three, three, okay, five days. Incorrect, POP two days, all right? So we just learned for POP two days, okay? POP two days. All right, no five days, two days. All right, guys. All right, this is why I'm saying please write things down, compare them. If you feel like it's five days, compare them with the information that you know. All right, all right, guys. Okay, POP, two days. All right, no five days, two days. Okay, two days. No worries, Dr. Soya. I didn't do that, my revision did. Okay, it's all right to forget. I forgot it too. Okay, so here we are. Okay, this is a game for you. Uh, what is UKMEC4, meaning what is the absolute contraindication? I think I've already highlighted it. This is why I spent so much time on that, because we're going to do these questions like loads. Quick, 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 guys, quick. What is the absolute contraindication, UKMEC4? What is the absolute contraindication? Please don't get this wrong. Here's the thing. It should be happening to the person, not to the relatives. That's what I told you. I said this. If it is an absolute contraindication thingy, it should happen to you and not to the relatives. Okay? That is your UKMEC4. If it was UKMEC3, then option two would have been right. Okay? So let's see if that's true. I haven't selected it. I highlighted it. You can't do this, right? You can't give them four weeks postpartum. Supposed to be six months. All right, next question. Here we are, 30 seconds. Which hormone you could measure or measure or measure on day 21? You know this, right? Progesterone. Why? Because it will tell us what does progesterone do? What did it tell us? Would tell us if she's ovulating or not, right? Whether she's ovulating or not. Right, okay, next question, 30 seconds. What is the strongest contraindication in prescribing COCP? Strongest contraindication, strongest, meaning absolute, almost absolute. We've done this, please don't do this. All right, we've done this. Uh, I told you the absolute contraindications are four to five categories, migraine with aura, smoking cigarette if she's 35 or more more than 15 cigarettes and um and if she is herself having vte or when it's history of it a vascular disease or ist uh some you know nephro neuro uh retinopathy or if she's having any autoimmune problems so what is it smoking history migraine with aura Absolute contraindication. If fine smoking history, fine BMI, but how much BMI, how much smoke, right? So my grain with aura remains the absolute contraindication. So you see, you have, you know things, right? It's not like you don't know things. There's so many expects to one question's answer, all right? 30 seconds for you to answer.
to this. We're moving forward if I feel like you, you would be able to answer and I don't need to explain. That is just your cue to, you know, answer on yourself with the 30 seconds timer being started. Last question. Okay, Dr. Elsno wants to know. Okay. They're saying, what method is, okay, you want me to slow down? All right, all right, Dr. Elsno. We, we got to do a lot. Why? All right. What contraindicated in this patient? Forget about everything. COCPs. Always COCPs. Is why she smokes her body mass index is 20, uh, 26 but she smokes 25 and she has a history of self injectomy that's not a problem she has a per she denies any personal history of vt but the fact that she smokes 25 cigarettes much, much more than uh 15 cigarettes a day that is a problem right guys okay oh that's clear all right next question 30 seconds Remember the mnemonic. CBC. CBC. Contraindication of COCP in cervical and breast cancer. No. CBC. C for contraindication, right? C for contraceptive. Contraceptive oral combined pill. C for cervical. C for breast cancer. This is a contraindication of COCP. What's a cervical cancer, breast cancer? The rest of it, easy peasy. Okay, lemon squeezy. Couldn't stop myself from not saying that. All right, next question, guys. Don't forget that. Remember the either, either one of them. All right, next question. Thirty seconds. Can Nexplanon be effective as early as seven days, as early as you insert it immediately? Not early, the word here uses immediately. Is that, is there a contraceptive like that? Because if that happens, all of the other contraceptives are gonna be like, bye-bye, you can go where you came from. Can Nexplanon cause weight gain? Or is it effective immediately? And if so, on the day four or day seven? What, yes? What do you want me to choose? Dr. Samir. Okay, you guys are saying five. See, here's the thing. Effective immediately as contraception if inserted on day four, saying the same, that if you are sure of a person's menstrual cycle, by person, I mean a woman, right? Not a man. So uh, you know what I mean, right? If a woman is on day four of her menstrual cycle, you see, 
If she is, I'm repeating, if she is on day four of menstrual cycle, next planon implant is effective immediately. And it can be used up to three years. If inserted up to and including day five of menstrual cycle, right? So if you insert it, uh, why seven days condoms? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it, all right? I'm gonna explain to you. Next planon, next planon, I told you that there, if there is a drug which is gonna help the immediate contraception in a woman, those are the next planons. Progesterone only pills are the ones that work, right, mostly. And uh, the progesterone only thingy, this is a progesterone only implant, right? It is long acting reversible which is short acting reversible, the pill. Understand here, right? We're doing questions by the speed, but, but we need to understand it. If it is long acting reversible contraception needed, the woman is not afraid of the pills, give her an explanon because it's progesterone only implant, all right? If she needs a short acting reversible contraception, afraid of the pills, POP, all right? POP is going to be affected on day. When is POP effective? Guys, we just did it. When is POP effective? Immediately. Immediately? Day seven? Day two? Day five? How many days? Day two days, right? POP within two days, not seven days, two days. Don't forget that. Two days, all right? Two days and it's going to work, all right? What about COCP? How many days? Five to seven. Seven days, five days, seven days. All right, you guys have seen it. I've just uh, told you earlier. Hopefully you guys remember. All right, okay. POP two days, COCP seven days. If you're putting in the POI, POI, right? Next one on POI. If you're putting that in within the first five days or day four or day five of the menstrual cycle of a female, Right? Understand, if you are inserting this implant on day five of the menstrual cycle, within day five or day four of the menstrual cycle, if you are given a POI, which is progesterone only implant, next one on, it's immediately effective. You understand? But what's the catch here? The catch is you need to know that she's on day five. So that's a problem. However, it's a good thing. You understand, guys? You follow? We're almost there. We're gonna end it soon. Okay, next question, 30 seconds. There is no need for extra precautions, right? Because she's taking Cerzet. Okay, that's what you guys are saying. Hopefully that is correct. Let's see if that. POPs plus antibiotics, no need for, intra, for extra precautions. When do we need to care? When they're taken, which drugs? Crab GPs, which is your? Carrefelps, Carrefelps, right? Carrefelps, right? Carbamazepine, rifampicin, right? Alcohol, uh, phenobarbiton, and smoking, sulfonylureas, along with the COCPs. Okay, all right. What is the absolute contraindication? You guys have 20 seconds to answer this.
I want to see how you guys do. So I'm just going to give it on to you and see if you can respond to this. A woman is 26. She's going for electri elective laparoscopic cholecystectomy in eight weeks' time. She takes no medications other than the COCDs. What do you want to tell her? Nothing. She could continue saying as normal. Or you're going to tell her that, you know, um, uh, you, you have to tell her that, you know, stop the pill now and restart it as soon as you can. Uh, tolerate oral intake after surgery. Or... Stop the pill now and restart two weeks after the surgery. Stop the pill four weeks before the surgery and restart two weeks after the surgery. Stop the pill on the day of surgery and restart two weeks after the surgery. You're saying stop four weeks before. Let's see if that is true. You guys are geniuses, right? This is a very familiar situation for surgical patients. Please do not forget this. Please do not forget this. Why? COCPs, you know, you know, this is very logical. I told you the contraindication for COCPs are what, right? Contraindication for COCPs absolute are the ones that, you know, if a person has got a vascular problem, they can cause venous thromboembolism. You see, hypercoagulable states. So definitely you wouldn't ask her to, you know, like continue as you want, right? Don't be, don't be crazy. She needs to stop it. All right, she needs to stop taking the pill four weeks before the surgery. Are you guys aware of what to do when they're taking PPIs? Yeah, we're going to take a break, Dr. Zareen, uh, when we're done with at least 40 questions. I, I want to end this today, so this is why. 40 questions, we're going to take a break. All right, we're going to take a break. All right, we need to boost ourselves up. If it is for Nimaz, then definitely for sure on, the, on question 40. All right, guys, next question. All right. What is the correct information to tell the patient regarding her COCP prior to surgery? You guys have 30 seconds to answer this. COCPs should rather be discontinued four weeks before major elective surgery, right? Estrogen containing should be discontinued four weeks before major elective surgery. A POP, a persistent only contraceptive, may be given as an alternative. Estrogen containing should be started after mobilization. You understand the term? After mobilization. All right, 30 seconds to answer this. What's the single most appropriate option? Prior to starting chemotherapy, she offers her different methods of contraception. What you want to do? 35, diagnosed with breast cancer. She was taking COCP. Prior to starting chemotherapy, she offers her a different method of contraception. What is best? And why is it best? Breast cancer. Um... POP is fine to be given because, you know, estrogen is something that is a problem, okay? It, it is the one that can cause the things that we're trying to avoid, hypercoagulable states. You guys are saying copper intrauterine contraceptive device. Why? Because of the fact that they do not have any hormones. All of the ones that have hormones are contraindicated, right? Those are contraindicated. Next question, folks. All right, we're almost there for the break. All right, what method classified by the UK eligibility criteria as having no caution or contraindication to the use in this condition? She's 19 year old, family, family planning. She has suffered from migraine with aura for the last 18 months. 
which of the following is okay to be given? With a person, to a person who's got migraine with aura. P.O.P. IUD. No, no, no. Please uh, don't just write ID. Uh, tell me which one. C O uh, C I U D. Okay. Entry train copper entry train device. Why? Because no hormones. Again, no hormones. Good to go. Right. See what do hormones do? They affect the vessels. Right. These all would affect the vessels. The ones that we're doing here, they won't affect the vessels. Copper has no hormones. Does not affect the vessels. All right. Twenty seconds. We've done this. Pelvic inflammatory disease, why? You want to exclude that? Why? Certain contraindication to insert in a copper and retrain contraceptive device. The ID is one of them because to what? It can lead to what? In certain, yeah, because of the local effects. A contraceptive device can lead to inflammatory disease and STIs, right? STIs, 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 can lead to STIs. More problem, you're inserting something foreign, okay? You're inserting something foreign in the body of a woman. It's gonna be a problem. Okay, which form of contraception is absolutely contraindicated in a person who's got first child by cesarean section four weeks ago? You know the answer as soon as you see it. Read the question properly. All right, folks, now we're off to take a break. Right, you know this one, we've done this, okay? We're off to take a break, we'll be break back and end this. Last question, which was the last question? All right, we're gonna take a break. No worries, no worries, okay, that's not this one. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna be back and end this. Okay. All right, guys, we're gonna end this. So let's continue further. Let's continue further. Let's move along. Uh, this one says, okay, the question was, the question was this one, that she wants, she's a model and her job is to stay slim. You understand her job is to stay slim her job is to stay slim right and uh, which is one of the following method is proven to be associated with the weight weight gain it is deeper provera deeper provera all right deeper provera next question guys you guys have 30 seconds because we've done this before she has taken progesterone only pill which is desergestrel no desergestrel is what Okay, guys, it's saying two, 12 hour window. Let's see if that's correct. That's right, next question is.
Okay. On which day would you carry out the middle luteal progesterone level? 35 days is her regular cycle. Day 28. Let's see if that's true. That's right. Next question. Right, these are the ones that just get easy for me, hopefully. Okay, next question, 30 seconds again. What's the single best management for this patient? You guys have 30 seconds to answer this. You guys are saying reassure, let's see if that's true. That is right, that is right. It is a regular bleeding, it's gonna be a problem, but we gotta deal with it because we get lots of benefits, all right? Okay, what method of contraception is least appropriate? We've done this. How long is next plan on good to go? That is right. Next question. 30 seconds. See, here's the thing, here's the thing. 35 GP surgery, how am I reading it? I'm gonna tell you how I'm reading it, all right? Okay, what is the single most appropriate advice to give her? First time happened, 35 year old, right? GP surgery, forgotten to change our COCP patch, combined contraceptive patch. 
right? 24 hours late in changing the patch, had sexual intercourse during this time. What do you want to do? If the delay changing the patch is less than 48 hours, it should be changed immediately. No further precautions needed. Less than 48 hours, if the problem is there, nothing else to do, go as forwards, right? Go as you always will. Next question is. More than that, extra precautions, right? This is already said, without being said. Age, she's 12 years old. She's 12 years old. She has had a boyfriend for eight months of studying. Fine, all right, good. But she's 12 years old. You need to ask her to talk to the parents, right? About her sexual activity, contact her parents yourself, as this is a child protection issue. She is 20, she's 12, right? Okay. Regardless of Gaelic competent, you're supposed to inform, right? Because she's too young, too young. 12 is too young. Guys, 30 year old woman, 34 year old man is struggling for 12 months. We spoke about it. That a doc, I guess Dr. Zoya had said, or Dr. Bervin, um, or Dr. Samir, or if any of you, Dr. Bachan, I don't remember who said that, but somebody said, and that was true, that if they're below 20, 12 months, above 30, 24 months, you see how that is? It works with the time, right, guys? So don't forget that. Which started the mock, by the way? Long-term, long-term progesterone only injectable implant is the one that can delay fertility up to 12 months, right? Up to 12 months. Don't forget that. This is for you. You guys have 30 seconds because, you know, this is something that you might have if they are going to ask a question regarding contraceptives. This is one of the questions that you should be looking on to because this just... Um, assesses your ability to do math problems, right?
All right, Dr. Asma. All right, I get that. I get that. I swore. Here's the thing. Here is the thing. Here's the thing. 19 year old presents to her general practitioner seeking emergency, right? Now let's just read it together. Okay. I thought you might have understood, but all right. Okay. What is the single best, most suitable of emergency contraception in this case? So she's 19, right? She's 19. She had a general practitioner. She went to them for an episode of unprotected sex that occurred 80 hours ago. You see? Above 72, eight years ago, she's on day 20 of her menstrual cycle. The GP notes that LR1 was prescribed to the patient 10 days ago for a similar episode. What is the most suitable method of contraception in this case? Again, we have one choice only. Which one? 120 days, 120 hours. Which one is a pill that can be used for 120 hours? Lebanol or LR1? Sorry, which one is it? Which one is it? You just need to remember the hours, no? You need to remember the hours. Can you guys hear me and see the screen, right? Lebanol is the one that you can give for 72 hours and oat paste acetate, 120, 120, 120, right? Okay, I hope that's clear. That's all you need to remember, the timing. Okay, that's all you need to remember. Is this clear now? Uh, Dr. Froze, what are you saying? Okay, you guys following? Next question. I'm going to continue it. No worries, Dr. Sir. No worries. Okay, we've just done this. I'm open. CUD, copper and She had an episode of oopsie, you know, she had an episode of what? She had an episode of oopsie, okay? Oopsie daisy, right? So she had an episode of unprotected sexual intercourse, which is oopsie. She would like emergency contraception to ensure that she's not pregnant. Pregnancy test is negative. She had it, um, you know, a morning after, like she had last night. What's she gonna do? What's she gonna do? She's here for what? Levonorgestrel, right? She needs a contraception, levonorgestrel, 72 hours, nothing, not much of science here. Okay, not much of science here. Not, uh, okay. Uh, what is the single most appropriate method of contraception that she should be using? She's 21, she's come to the GP, she's in stable relationship, she's got partial epilepsy, she takes carbamazepine car regularly, she's got heavy menstrual bleeding. What do you want to do? Carbamazepine is one of the crap GPs, isn't it? Isn't it? That's true. Now, <clears throat> she's having a history of heavy menstrual bleeding. Does she have the heavy menstrual bleeding right now? She doesn't. So we can give her what? Quail? Copper quail? That's what you guys are saying. Incorrect. Incorrect. Why? Why is it incorrect? Why is it incorrect? 21, a stable relationship, partial epilepsy, carbamazepine is contraindicated in the drugs that cause induction of the enzymes of the liver. Carbamazepine and COCPs, yes, contraindicated. Deeper provera can be used, right? Because it's only progesterone. It can be used in young individuals. Intrauterine system, what does intrauterine system contain? Marina, what does it contain? What does Marina contain? What does Marina contain? Progesterone can be used, right? The choice of contraception is this. Why? How old is she? 21. All right, she's 21. We can use Marina. No COCP. She has got heavy bleeding. Then, secondly, what else? It's not going to be affected by the time inducing drugs. All right? It is also going to reduce the bleed, provide the contraception, safe with the anti-epileptics. Don't forget that. 
right? Don't forget that. Don't forget that. C, good to be used with carbamazepine, enzyme induces, good to be used with the anti-epileptic, good for the heavy bleeding, right guys, clear? If Mirina wasn't given, then copper device, all right? If it wasn't given, all right, 30 seconds. Nineteen year old. Take microgram thirty, which is progesterone for the past two years and is currently four days into a packet of pills. She had sexual intercourse last night, unsure what to do. She took yesterday's pill today, this morning. No action needed. No action needed. Why? It's a COCP, guys. It's a COCP. That's what you need to know. Only missed one pill. One pill. You took it. More than two pills, then what? Then you'd say you'd go for it. Next question, folks.
reduces the bulkiness. Braid of the uterus provides long-term contraception. So intrauterine systems told you it's universal contraceptive. I mean it because it's there all the time. Okay, next question, guys. Every 12 weeks, guys, every 12 weeks. Next question. Almost there. Next one on. Why? Why next one on? Because 18 year old learning difficulty. That's what you missed if you chose anything else. Learning difficulties, next one on. All right, guys? Because you have to remember to take it. All right? CBC, contraceptives contraindicated in breast and cervical cancer. Don't forget that. You guys have learned well now, right? More than three hours, no? 30 minutes past it. Even if one minute past it, you're gonna take the actions. I told you big questions are life savers, right? Don't be scared of them. My brain with aura, not just my brain history, my brain with aura, effective absolute contraindication, UK MEC4, just my brain, UK MEC3, my brain with aura, UK MEC4, effective five life, uh, effective five light and deficiency. Don't worry, you didn't know that. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right. That's right. We didn't explain it better, all right? So do not forget that. Last question, we're done with it. Uh, do you want to do neurology today or tomorrow? It's up to you guys.
All right, call by Andrea trying device. So we're going to take a 10 minutes break. I'm going to be, we're going to come back and do at least 30 questions of neurology, right? Don't worry, it's going to be good. All right, call by Andrea trying contraceptive uh, device, because why? She, the patient has entered the postmenopause period, not at period for 12 months, and it's good to give this to her. All right, we're ending it. Explain or, okay, okay. 48 year old, right? Um, come for, came for contraception, stopped having a period 12 months ago. She's normal tensive, blood pressure is fine. Smokes 15 cigarettes a day, right? Okay, uh, she has a history of breast cancer, successfully treated mean COCP the window. This patient has entered the postmenopausal. Even though she's postmenopausal, she still requires contraception. Because she's on the age of 50. Because she's got, right? And the rest of the things also, right? Serzet is not the traditional POP, okay? And uh, we do not give progesterone in such situations because she's got breast cancer, right? It's not protective. All right, so you want to give her copper because that's far better. All right, okay, that's that's going to be good for her as she has a history of breast cancer. Yeah, true, Dr. Uh, can you repeat regarding breast cancer or breastfeeding? Okay, if she is breastfeeding, if she is breastfeeding, then you're not going to give her COCPs until six months. If she's not within six weeks, you can start. All right, Dr. Zareen, Dr. Zareen, we're going to take a break of 12 hours window, please. Uh, about what? 12 hour window, see, Sarah Z, Sarah Z. That is not the traditional one, right? If you're taking a traditional POP, if you're taking a traditional POP, the window period is three hours. Right, if she's taking Cerzet, then the window period is 12 hours. If the pills missed after that, after that, then you are going to do what? You're gonna ask her to you know use extra protection, be extra precaution, take extra precaution, take the pill, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Don't worry, Dr. Zarin, don't worry. That's all right, you got the recordings, right? Don't worry, I understand how it is. But don't be tense, right? We got this. Don't be tense. That's all you have to do. See what works out for you, right? If it's not working out, then that's okay. You can, you can use the recordings. All right. Um, yes, 12 hours for traditional. Okay. All right. So we're going to 